to God. God will honor your faith in the name of Jesus. Okay, this morning, I and my wife are going to do a tag team. So I'll take like 20 minutes. Then she will take another 20 minutes. Praise God. Amen. By the way, um, if you have been watching the news uh, on CNN, I hope you have heard that uh, it's now legal in the whole of America for uh, same-sex people to marry. That means for a man to marry a man and for a woman to marry a woman uh, in the whole of America. Now, I, I understand that um, for the layman, you don't understand the impact of that. Uh, America controls and influences the world. If America sneezes, people all over the world catch cold. Do you understand? Some people don't understand that implication. America influences the world. So if something happens in America, what it means is that the likelihood is that very soon it will come to your doorstep. Uh, I know most people men don't know that. There are a lot of things you are doing today is determined by America and America's economy. If you know anything about the world, uh, how the world is run, if America is angry with you, all they need to do is to put sanctions. Your economy will, will crawl if America deals with you financially. Um, when you heard that uh, Nigeria was trying to buy arms um, in black markets, when the whole country was trying to ship dollars in cash to buy arms, what happened was that America refused to sell arms to Nigeria and told every other person not to sell arms to Nigeria. That's how it works. America can tell people not to sell to you. And the people dare not sell to you. So if America is saying we are all allowing men to marry men, what it means is that very soon, if your country does not do that, you will be in their black book. Do you understand the implications, guys? Somebody gets what I'm saying? So I know some of you don't know the implication of that. I don't even think you need to be spiritual to know that that cannot make sense. You don't even have to be born again Christian. Animals know that. I've never seen a male dog impregnating or trying to impregnate on that male dog. Animals know that. Praise God. It is clearly not convenient for a man to have sex with a man. It is clearly impossible for a woman to have sex. What they have is not sex. They don't have the organs. There's no organ for a woman and a woman to have sex. It's madness, guys. That's the reality of the world we live in. That's the reality that the world is coming to an end. In case you, all your investment is in this life, you are wasting your time. If all your investments are about how to eat in this life, I can tell you right now, it's rounding up. Sodom and, I watched Sodom and Gomorrah live on TV, on CNN, yesterday or day before yesterday. He said the crowd, if you see the crowd, people come to celebrate man and man marrying. If you see the crowd, I watched Bible on CNN a few days ago. Amazing. The world is, and of course, he said in the last days there will be wars and rumors of war. So everywhere there's a bombing, everywhere there's a shooting. Guys, if all your investment is in this life, <laughs> I can tell you you're wasting your time now. I can tell you right now. I don't think the time is, is that much again. I don't think it's that much. All the things they've said will happen before the end. They're already happening. They're already happening. Praise God. Are you here, somebody? Okay. Let me try and do my 10 minutes left. I've used 10 minutes to talk about uh, the madness. Jesus said something very interesting. This because to me, this is one of the most important parts about a marriage. Jesus said something when he was with his disciples. He said, it is expedient for me, or it's expedient for you, that I go away. Jesus said, it is expedient. That means it is important for you, that I go away, because if I do not go away, somebody called the Comforter, somebody called the Holy Spirit, will not come. Are you here, somebody? He said, it's expedient for you that I go away. When I go away, the person called the Holy Spirit will come. And when that Holy Spirit comes, Let's read it, guys. Um, I can't see my own screen. Well, John, okay, John 16, 7. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that what? I go away. For if I go not away, it says, the comforter will not what? 
come unto you, but if I depart, I will what? Send him to you. Now, why was he saying this? You see, at that time, Jesus was making all their decisions for them. Jesus was guiding them, protecting them, advising them. But because Jesus was here bodily, it means he was limited in how he could help them. So he was saying, it's important for you that I go. When I go, the Holy Spirit will come. And the good thing about the Holy Spirit coming is that he can dwell in every single person and guide every single person. He can provide wisdom and counseling for every single person. Another word for the Holy Spirit or the Comforter is, is counselor. Is, is, in fact, the original Greek word is parakletos. It means somebody called alongside to help us. Basically, it's like a special advisor. You have a permanent special advisor inside you. And the good thing about this advisor is that he knows about every area of life. Are you here, somebody? He said, this unction that you have received, which is the Holy Spirit, it will teach you all things. He said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you, you, the anointing which you receive abides in you. He said, you don't need that any man will teach you. He said, because the same unction, the same spirit you have received will teach you all things. I don't know if we can bring that as in First John. Um, I think chapter 2, verse 20 and 27. DJ, 1 John 2, 20 and 27. So, the Holy Spirit is our special advisor. When I see a Christian that is struggling and all that, it's just a proof that he's not yet yielded to the Holy Spirit. Because he, he's, he's using his own mind to make his own decisions, and he's making poor decisions. For, okay, um, are we there? Uh, bless you, uh, 21st. Okay? okay, fine, let me read this one. He said, but the anointing which you have received of him... The anointing is talking about the Holy Spirit. Does what? I can't hear you. What does it do? It lives in you. There's no excuse. Everybody has If a born again Christian. He abides in you. He says, uh, and you need not that any man do what? Teach you. What do they mean? Do they mean you should not go to church or should not go to school? No, no, no. What they are saying here is that there are some situations in your life that nobody can advise you about. There are some things I can't advise you about because I don't have the power. Even though you have asked me the question, you are giving me the scenario, I still don't have the perfect picture because I'm not there. He says, so there are some things where no man can actually advise you. It's only the Holy Spirit. Some people ask me all kinds of questions sometimes. All kinds of questions. Pastor, should I take this job or should I not take this job? How am I going to know? I don't know. Should I marry Jane or should I marry Jennifer? I don't know. Should my child go to this school or that school? I don't know. But they said you don't need, when you have the Holy Spirit inside you, you don't need any man at that time to advise you. You have a special advisor. He said you don't need that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you what? All things. It can teach you all things. And especially in the area of marriage. If you are single, it will first show you from beginning who to marry. Today, people don't know anything about being led of the Spirit of God to marry. You, you, the Holy Spirit can order your steps, can take you, can lead you to who to marry. Even when you see a boy you like or a girl you like, before you even start going far, you can pray and the Holy Spirit will guide you. The same thing if you are married. Listen, God never expected us to live our lives based on our mental ability. We have a special advisor. I, I, I was telling them on the island church when I thought about this, I said, you know, you have the person of the Holy Spirit to advise you in how you relate with your wife and your husband. If, two, if the couple, if the two people in the marriage can be yielded to the Holy Spirit, every marriage will be smooth. If you can allow, his call on that name for the Holy Spirit is our helper. So he helps you. You can't do it in your own strength. He helps you. The Holy Spirit is called our helper. <laughs> In building
relationships that last. It begins with improving one's self-esteem. Looking beyond face value. And choosing the right partner. You too can have the marriage of your dreams. A time of innocence and love. Could we go back to her? If you yield to him, the marriage will be sweet. He will help you. I learned this early in my marriage. It has helped me. I'm not a very naturally smart person. I'm not. I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm not. Many people think I'm very smart. Thank you for believing in me, but I can tell you right now, naturally speaking, I'm not smart. I just depend on the Holy Spirit a lot. So he always advises me smartly. When I got married newly, sometimes if there's a misunderstanding between me and my wife, not a quarrel, a misunderstanding, she's the one that usually misunderstands. <laughs> I'm joking, no. Because that's, that's, that's how some, some men see it. Oh. That every, in the, pro, the wife is only the problem. She's the only problem we have. <laughs> She's the only problem we have. You know, so when there's a misunderstanding between two of us, and I want to talk, and the Holy Ghost say, don't talk, don't say anything, don't explain anything. I'll say, ah, ah, I'm a teacher of the word of God. If I explain to her, she will understand. Don't worry, Holy Spirit. This, I, have, I got this. I got this. I'm a, I'm a teacher. If I explain what I'm saying, she will understand. And the more I explain, the more angry she will become. If you're a married person here, you know what I'm talking about. As you're explaining, they are now even using the words. Oh! Say, oh! So that's what you... The explanation now even causes more problem. <laughs> so they're going to say, I told you not to say anything. You thought you could do it without me. So I learned early sometimes, it's not when everything is going on that sometimes you, you don't have to react. Look, I said, don't react. Don't even say your mind. Don't even say what you know. The Holy Ghost, uh, even as a pastor, there are times people tell me about themselves or even report somebody to me and the Holy Ghost said, don't even call the person, don't say anything. Just pray for the person. Sometimes if you confront something, you will delay it from changing. The person will now stand strong. That you want to change me? Never. They would have changed on their own. But because you have brought, up, brought it up, they won't change again. So I learned that early. Those days, I'll be in the office. The Holy Ghost say, call your wife. Just call her to check on her. I'll say, let me finish this thing I'm doing. And guess what? Two minutes after, she will call me. And I'll say, hey, I was just planning to call you. In the world of women, planning to. Is zero. You score no points for planning to. I was planning to. Psh, zero. You must have called first. Sometimes she will serve me food and I'll be eating the food and the Holy Ghost will say, Give her your fish. Huh? I say, Number one, she's the one that cooks the food. Number two, there's still fish. She can go to the pot and take her own fish. While I will be arguing, she will just say, Honey, give me inside your fish now. You see, I can't say, the only good job to eat, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. What you're applying to do, score zero. You see, if I had given her at that time, to have scored a lot of points. The Holy Spirit knows your spouse. He knows what you should do part time. If you can yield yourself to start listening to the Holy Spirit, you will have a good relationship. You will have a good marriage. There are times the Holy Ghost tells your wife, don't talk back. Every woman that has chopped beating in a marriage doesn't listen to the Holy Spirit. Now, I do not support beating in any shape or form. There's no reason why a man should beat a woman. So don't get me wrong. It's 100% wrong. But I'm just saying, any woman that has ever chopped beating in a marriage, she did not listen to the Holy Spirit. The man, something has annoyed him from the office. Maybe somebody caught a jam his car. Something has annoyed him. He's looking for who to vent. He gets home. And the Holy Ghost say, don't talk to him. Just greet him. Give him his food. Don't say a word. But you, being a woman, you want to show yourself. Say, where are you coming from by this time? The next thing you remember is where the slap came from. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Say, don't talk. Don't fight. Don't say anything. 
Obey him. Do what he says. Some women are always arguing that he's commanding me. He says I should do it. I, don't, I, know, I know this thing is wrong, but this is what he says to do. The Bible says you should submit. So go ahead, just submit. He will learn that you were right, but don't push it. <laughs> Some weeks ago, two weeks ago or so, um, I and my wife were always stay in the car. What we do is that, uh, you know, in this busy Lagos, you can be married uh, and never spend time with yourself. You are, you are together in the same household. Proximity doesn't guarantee intimacy. Do you understand? I said proximity does not guarantee intimacy. You can be around each other and never have real intimacy. You are just busy talking about children, carrying children, watching TV, doing so. You're always doing things. So what we try to do is that um, when we get home like this sometimes from church, either on Sunday or Wednesday or any other time, or we go out for something else and we get home, we just try and sit in the car with the AC on and everything and just talk in the car. We are, if, if we are with children, we send the children into the house. We just talk in the car. We use that moment. Because the moment we enter the house, you know how it is. Distraction has started. The children are running up and down. We need to cook. I need to watch TV. Need to do, so we, we don't have that moment. Only two of us. But a car is a very small place. So we can talk. So we just stay in the car and just talk. Praise God. We do that regularly. In fact, we do that almost every time. So we were sitting in the car so one, two, about two weeks ago in the night. As we were talking, after all our long talk, you know, so we we're about to go into the house. As we we're about to go, the Holy Ghost said, kiss your wife. Now, like I said, it's a normal practice for us to stay in the castle, and I have never kissed her before in the car after our spending time. But the Holy Ghost said, kiss your wife. So as she was about to go, I said, ah, you're going like that. I dragged that back and I kissed her. She was like, that she was just thinking of kissing me now. <laughs> you see? So I, just, I didn't tell her the Holy Ghost said, of course. I just looked like, look like a cool guy. I'm a bad dude. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> I know what's up, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you yield to the Holy Spirit, you will look like a lover boy. You will look like a stud. You will look like a bad guy. You know, just because you are listening to the Holy Spirit. You will know when to compliment your wife. You will know when to call her. In the middle of the day, Logos tell you, call your wife now and just ask after her. She will say, wow, I was just thinking about you when you called. That's a major point for you. Text her. Call her. Don't say this. Compliment her. There are some days she's feeling down. She's not feeling she's looking fine. As she comes out, they will go say, compliment her where we spend 30 minutes. Telling her how good she looks today. Do you understand? If you listen to the Holy Spirit, you have a sweet marriage. Both, whether a man or as a what? Woman. So I'm not that smart, but I look very smart. <laughs> because I listen to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I believe your relationships have been strengthened by the message you just watched. I want to give you a chance to enter the most important relationship of your life, and that is the relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are watching me right now and you are not born again, I want to pray with you. Just close your eyes and say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sin. Wash me with your blood. I receive the grace to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for I am born again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you prayed that prayer with me, you are now born again. There are numbers on the screen. Please call the numbers. Someone will be willing to speak with you. God bless you. In building relationships that last, it begins with improving one's self-esteem. Looking beyond face value and choosing the right partner. You too can have the marriage of your dreams.